Welcome to Georgia's Museum of Agriculture and Historic Village at Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. Can you imagine life without cell phones or a computer? Well, here at Georgia's Living History Museum and Learning Center, you can journey back in time and enjoy exploring a very different world. Where living off the land, well, it was not just a phrase, but the reality of rural Southern life. Conceived by former State Senator Ford Spink, the museum opened as the Agarama on July the 4th, 1976, our nation's 200th birthday. As Georgia's Living History Museum, the Agarama sought to educate the public about Georgia's rural and agricultural past. Of particular importance was keeping alive the old disappearing folkways of South Georgia between the reconstruction and the early 1900s. Back then, South Georgia was known as Wiregrass, Georgia because wiregrass covered the forest floor beneath the longleaf pines, serving as a natural meta for the early settlers' free-ranging livestock. According to Georgia author Janice Ray, these early pioneers of South Georgia were said to be just as tough and wiry as that grass. In 2010, the museum and the village became part of Abraham Vaughan Agricultural College. Uh, it was a natural fit between the college and the museum. We share a mission for education, preservation of history, and uh, education of, of uh, people about the importance of agriculture uh, in the state's history and economy. Uh, the merger of the museum with the college has been a good, we believe it's been a good deal for everybody involved, for all stakeholders. Uh, we've been able to run it efficiently. Uh, we've been able to provide uh, a range of programs for people from preschool age all the way to adult learners and, and visitors and guests and uh, we've been able to fortify our efforts in the area of cultural activities uh, through art exhibits, gallery exhibits, uh, for sale art, uh, the wiregrass farmers market uh, and a range of opportunities uh, for students at the college who do internships uh, at the Museum of Agriculture. This mutually beneficial partnership has allowed the museum to serve as a, a learning laboratory for the college's students, particularly those in the four-year rural studies program, the only one of its kind in the nation. Interns and student workers have learned firsthand about traditional farming practices. They've created two nature trails, researched and written supplementary curriculum materials in support of area schools, documented dying rural customs such as syrup boiling, and turpentine distilling and have to catalog many artifacts and create exhibits. Today the Georgia Museum of Agriculture has more than 35 structures that have been relocated to the 95 acre site. They've been faithfully restored and preserved as they would have looked in the 1870s through 1910. Interpreters are located on site to explain and demonstrate lifestyles of a century ago. I think it's very important for someone to see this. Like I say, living history is the best way to learn about anything. Yes, sir. Oh, I've enjoyed it. You know, I've enjoyed it. I wouldn't have stayed that long. I've stayed ever since 76. And I've enjoyed it, every minute of it. You know, a lot of people dread going to work, and I look forward to going to work because it's so much fun, especially when the children come in. Hundreds of school children come through the village each year and experience how things were done a hundred years ago in hands-on workshops and tools. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Our journey into the past begins right here at the Old Fashioned Country Store, where visitors can browse among handmade goods, all made in Georgia, such as pure local honey, hand-woven baskets, and hand-turned wooden bowls created in the village's variety workshop. Decorative items forged at our own blacksmith shop, Dinner! Locally made goat's milk, soaps, and delectable southern jams and jellies made right here at the museum. Mmm, good. Our Georgia artisans put hours of love and care into the works they create and try to keep their creative processes as close as possible to the time-honored traditions of the old days. Jane Rogers has loved the art of quilting since she was a small child, watching her grandmother at work. Today, she and the Wiregrass Quilters Guild are ensuring that this folk tradition remains vital. Well, quilting is a big part of our heritage in this country, and 
Almost everybody who comes in has a story about my grandma used to quilt and I used to crawl up under the quilting frame. We hear that all the time and it's new every time. It's, it's a, a fun thing. Everybody seems to have a connection to quilts and it's, it's important that that's preserved as part of our heritage. Amy Brown is keeping the old fashioned art of tatting and lace making alive. I'm demonstrating two forms of lace making and the first form is tatting and it's based on a square knot and the second form of lace making is based on weaving techniques and twisting where the bobbins are twisting and weaving through. G.W. Tibbetts is a Tifton native who weaves baskets from grapevines. My grandkids all have baskets and all my family have baskets that they use for bread. My sister's learned to make baskets out of ivy, and she makes baskets using ivy. So, you know, it's, it's a family thing. It's fun, and it's something that I love to do with the Georgia Museum. Jerry and James Walker's honey products are made from wild South Georgia flowers surrounding their Tifton farm. When he's not tending the bees, James spends his time turning out handcrafted bowls of locally milled wood using the old-fashioned woodworking machinery in the museum's variety workshop. We put uh, wood on the lathe and we probably turn a bowl or a pitcher or a vase and uh, it's right there where they can walk right by and, and uh, see what we're doing right up close, they were in three feet of the lathe, and we bring some of the stuff that we make and uh, have it out and display. It's time to hop aboard the old log train and take a quick visit to the farmstead and the village. All aboard! <laughs> The Living History Museum consists of four distinct areas. A traditional farm of the 1870s, a progressive farmstead of the 1890s, an industrial complex, and an authentic rural town of that era. Here on the traditional farm, life was simple, but hard. And the farming family had to be independent and self-sustaining. The farmer grew almost all the things that his family needed right here on the homestead. Chickens, hogs, Piney Woods cows, they range free on the wire grass surrounding the homestead. The old Clark cabin with its washhead, sugarcane mill, and syrup kettle for making syrup on the farm is built of local hand-hewn logs. Children were just as busy as their parents with all the chores to be done. And the children who participate in the museum's workshop programs at the farm experienced what it was like to work and play in the late 1800s. But for our Wiregrass ancestors, education was just about as important as getting their chores done. The Sand Hill School is a one-room schoolhouse built in when? You're right, 1895. The school marm could only work with one grade at a time. So each grade would come forward while the other children sat at their desk and worked on their assignments. Nearby is Wesley Chapel, an integral part of the rural settlement this chapel was originally constructed in 1882. The window panes are made of hand poured glass. The pulpit, the pews, and the railings are all original. Here at the 1890s Progressive Farm, a wood burning cast iron stove. It replaced the open hearth for cooking and a hallway known as a dog trot helped provide natural air conditioning during the hot summers. When the water begins flowing, turning the water wheel, the old grist mill will begin to turn corn into meal. The mill was originally built in 1879. Most farmers did not have milling equipment so they took their crops to the grist mill. 
The mill also served as a social center. Men gathered to catch up on the news of the day while the grain was being processed. And of course, the ponds attracted local fishermen. Now that whistle means the sawmill is up and running. It took a crew of 10 men to keep a mill like this operating. Loggers would cut the trees, drag them to the sawmill, cut it into the links for houses and furniture. The steam engine operated the mill, which can produce 10,000 board feet a day. The turpentine, or naval storage industry, began in the 1870s, and this turpentine steel provided barrels of turpentine for hundreds of users. Every spring during the Folklife Festival, the old steel roars into life again, and visitors young and old can experience the aroma of the distilling pine sap. You can even buy a bottle of genuine turpentine at our country store. This is our rural town, and you won't want to miss the blacksmith shop where everything is hammered out from hardware to horseshoes. Get refreshments at the drugstore, then stop at the feed and seed and the commissary. To top off your visit, come explore the original Victorian home of Captain Henry Harding Tift, the founder of Tifton. Here one can really experience the life of a well-to-do 19th century family. The house features rich, thick, curly pine moldings, tall ceilings, authentic furnishings, and heart pine floors. Now you've gotten a taste of some of the many features of our homesteads in Wiregrass Village. But don't forget, the Georgia Museum of Agricultural Experience doesn't stop with all the hustle and bustle of farm and town life. Come on inside to our 9,000 square foot exhibit hall and linger a while to examine the extensive collection of agricultural machinery, farm implements, wagons, and vehicles. In our exhibit hall, you can see an original prototype of an Eli Whitney cotton gin. Follow the mechanization of farming from the simplest plows to the first ever mobile peanut combine. See an 800 year old cypress stump. Learn about the turpentining industry and smell tobacco leaves curing in a life size tobacco barn. The exhibit hall also features temporary exhibits relating to Georgia's rural arts and history. There's always something different to learn. Next to the exhibit hall, the art gallery showcases the work of traditional and rural Georgia artists. The gallery hosts a new exhibit every three months, spotlighting individuals, artisans, or groups of artisans who not only create rural art, but are actively involved in passing their skills to the next generation. And don't forget to visit the Langdale Nature Center to discover more about our local natural resources through animal exhibits and hands-on exploration. The Georgia Museum of Agriculture and Historic Village is just one of the many exciting tourist and arts opportunities available in the Tift area. And local farmers and artisans have their goods for sale at the Wiregrass Farmers Market, held every Saturday from April through October, right here in the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. All aboard. Now that you know a little bit about our village and our museum, come join us for an adventure back in time. Explore a place where the community was tight-knit, where the doors were never locked, where although life close to the earth, it was not easy, it was good. At the Georgia Museum of Agriculture and Historic Village, you're always welcome.